So we're going to use Podman today to build a LAMP stack. And that kind of goes against what containers are really designed to do. And I just started with containers, so I don't understand all the idiosyncrasies under the hood. But I've used Vagrant and VirtualBox and um, VM images for a long time. And one of the differences between containers and uh, an image is a persistence. There isn't any persistence in a container. When you shut the container down, uh, you're starting it back up again from a clean slate. Everything you did in that container is gone. So that's great for if you're testing things, but, but also uh, if you're releasing an application. Um, uh, containers are really designed for production. And that gets into uh, a whole other part of uh, OpenShift and um, where things are going with that. Some really great technology there. But for a LAMP stack, you have to put your head in a different space because a LAMP stack is not meant for production. It's meant for testing. And so there are things you're going to do in that environment that you would never use on a production server. But development and production are completely different things. You could have uh, your database on a different server than, uh, than the, uh, the website files that you're hosting. So uh, uh, a LAMP stack is uh, meant for development only. And so when you're building uh, a LAMP stack from a container, you have to go about things in a completely different manner than you would normally do. And so we're going to do that here, and I'll show you why that is. But it's completely doable, and it works great, and it's fast. Um, so what I did was I created a script here. This is uh, a script. The main thing with this is uh, with the script, you're not having to repeat a lot of commands over and over again. There are a lot of commands that go into the um, starting up the container to the part where it's ready to use. And I wanted to make it easier on me because I just want five minutes to spin up a, spin up a lamp stack and then I want to crash it and move on to something else. So uh, here in this um, script, we have just a few items that we'll be filling out at the beginning. We'll be running the script and we'll have a lamp stack in a few minutes. So let's um, use WordPress as an example. You know, this is a, another great resource. I'm going to throw this down in the description. Uh, Scott McCarty. Uh, honestly, I don't think I would have even tackled this if I had not read this article because he was going into the arguments why you would. And a lot of uh, what I did in this script is uh, mirrored on um, what he's talking about here. So this is definitely worth a read. So let's go ahead and grab WordPress here and, uh, and save it. Okay, well, we got WordPress a few times in here. So, so, let's open up a terminal here. And we're going to grab this script. going to make some changes in the script. Um, not a, a lot here. We're going to create a database that we're going to use. User. And we're going to put in a password. And uh, 
we're going to go ahead and do a prefix here. WordPress, uh, by default, it has a prefix that you can use. We'll just go ahead and do that. So now that we uh, have the script in place, um, it's built much in the same way that uh, Vagrant is. If you're familiar with Vagrant, you'll understand what, uh, what this does. And there's a description, just type bash box, and you'll get a description of some of the different things that you're going to do. But here we're just going to do bash box up. While this is going, um, we'll take a quick look at what it's doing here. Um, first of all, containers are generally meant to run one process. But there are images that you can download and use that will allow you to um, run a, uh, a one container and several processes within it. Um, it just look for ubi init, uh, ubi init, and I, I'm using the Red Hat. Uh, sub you do have to have a Red Hat subscription to run this. Um, uh, and uh, with that subscription, you have access to the repository where you can download this file. So if you're logged in with your Red Hat subscription, you'll have access to this. So what it's going to do is it's going to set up the LAMP stack and virtually um, make a, um, a base that you're going to launch your site off with. And then the script will go through and make some other modifications to make it usable to us. Um, one of the things that uh, it will do is open up a couple of ports. Um, the only ports that were important to me were the, uh, um, the web ports and um, uh, the debug ports. Um, everything else is going to be in the, I mean, the mail is, you don't want mail to escape if you're in development you want a mail trap, and this is perfect for that because if you don't open the port, it's not going to go anywhere. But in this uh, stack here, it has been uh, created to, to trap that mail and send it to the root user. And in fact, you have bash box mail, which you can use to check any of that mail and make sure that you know, that process is working. So this isn't going to take too long. Once it first builds that image, you can restart this uh, box and um, it'll be much quicker. But it will build just as if you were in Vagrant and you're using um, um, a, a VM. It's going to build um, a, a virtual environment for each site that you work on. And you're only going to run one of these by themselves. Like I said, you're not trying to you know, unless you're in production environment and you need to work with that, you're going to have completely different tools. This is a LAMP stack uh, generally for debugging code. So everything is going to be in this single container. And another reason for that is, is that one of the idiosyncrasies of this, and also one advantage it has, is that when you're sharing data, um, you don't want to use the user option. If you use the user option, what's gonna, you're going to have all sorts of different, um, depending on, you can even tell it, to, hey, I want to use um, user ID 1000. And it'll use user ID 1000, but then all of your files are painted with UID 1000. But if you leave it on root and allow all of your services to run on root, any files that are created using root and shared to your drive automatically have the right permissions for you. So run everything as root. Generally, you would never do that in a production environment. To make this work, yeah, we ha there's a, a, a special copy of um, uh, H, uh, of Apache in this um, repository that allows you to run on root, and it uses that in this build. Um, all of MySQL. Um, uh, uh, you know, everything in here is going to run as root because any files that you're saving on the system that get saved as root will be saved for the right permissions on your own system. And I'll give you a demonstration for that here in just a minute. Well, let's take a look for, um, 
at the files, what we got here. While well, it's just busy building up here. So we go into our public HTML directory and, oh, well, it'd be nice if we actually had um, some files there. Let's just kick, kill this directory. Unzip. So if we look at uh, all the files, um, they have my permission set. If the system creates new files, and you want it to be able to create new files, some site packages won't work unless they can create files here. They have sorts of cache files. You want all that to be your own permissions. You don't want to have to mess around with permissions. You want to be able to easily delete things or uh, take things when you're done. Um, you don't have to be messing around with file permissions. If you're inside this box and a file gets stamped as root, they're going to come out looking like this. So why not run all the services in root? And who cares? Because it's never going to go out into production. You're just trying to uh, work on your code. So we're at the tail end of this creation here. And uh, another re we're not sheltering an image somewhere. So the image isn't coming over ready to use. We're actually building this image. It's installing all the software that it needs. And now it's uh, updating the configuration. It's asking me if I want to install the database now. I don't have a database uh, being imported, although I can if I add the file name. But we're, um, we wanted to build this, uh, this database with this information here. So we're going to say yes. Another cool thing that you can do inside the container directory is uh, if you're coming over with your own um, a database, uh, a raw database files. You can drop them in that file there, or if it's just a SQL file, it, it will uh, import that in for you too, either way. So, and now that that's up and running, um, we have, uh, as it says here, we'll want to stamp this in our host file. Um, I've done that here, so now I'm going to open up a private window and uh, let's take a look at this, this site. So now we're running within the lamp. Uh, let's take a look at that, uh, what, what's happening here. So bash box SSH, oh, I'm in public, uh, I got to go back to the box, bash box SSH. Now we're inside the box. I'm going to var www. See, here's all of our files. If you look, they're all marked as root. But if you look at in our, there they are. So if, I, if I'm in root and I actually create a file, um, uh, touch test, we have um, the test file and you see the permissions have been painted for it. That's why we want to leave everything root. Why bother? Why, uh, um, why try to build something that uh, everybody's familiar with? Uh, make it work the way you need it to. So that's probably why this hasn't been done or, you know, much or used much. It kind of goes against um, the normal way of, of building these stacks. So we just uh, started it. Let's go. It's asking us for the database. Uh, we got uh, lamp lamp ready. We have the password, and uh, we had that prefix there. We create it, run the installation, asking us for a site name. We got uh, a username. We're all set. And if you take a look at uh, the directory here, um, 
you know, as you know, with a, a first build of a WordPress site, um, it actually builds the, um, the WP config for you. Everything works there because everything is running via root permission and uh, all the files that um, you're saving um, on the system that's persistent will actually be flagged with your own, um, uh, with your own information here. Easy to access. Also, um, mail. Um, you're not going to be sending people spam when you're working on um, any kind of uh, mail functionality. That all can be viewed in bash box mail. Got to be in the right directory. Yes. Oh, there it is. So there's our... Uh, There's a, that's, that was our first one. So here we go. It's all right there. Probably trying to take me to the wrong. In any case, we're, um, I think I pretty much showed you, um, uh, everything to do with uh, building up the LAMP stack. Um, there's a lot of information here. Um, this is just a simple script to make the, the process uh, simpler. Um, again, you can, um, you can halt uh, the process. Um, you can destroy it and destroy all the files with it. Um, anybody familiar with Vagrant should be able to figure out what it's doing. And uh, this if anything, um, if you're not using the script, at least you can see from the script what the script is doing in order to build a LAMP stack to begin with. And there is a lot of moving pieces, and that's why it's going in a script, and um, I'm not going to have to repeat the process a million times.